debate, the Honourable Member for Mount Royal. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to my Honourable Colleague for that uh, warm reception. I will be sharing my time with the Honourable Member from Eglinton Lawrence, and I want to thank everyone who's given me the opportunity to talk about Iran, because this is an issue that is very important, I think, to all Canadians, but in particular to many communities within my riding. The Iranian-Canadian community in my riding, who have been the greatest victims of the regime that is currently in place in Iran, they have suffered from political oppression. The Baha'i community, which is not recognized as a religion under the Iranian constitution, has suffered endless streams of discrimination. The Jewish community, the Christian community, religious minorities in Iran have all suffered. And those that have come here understand what they went through and they understand what their friends and families still in Iran are going through as a result of this regime. So this motion in no way imputes any fault to the Iranian people or to the Iranian Canadian community. It solely singles out the totalitarian, authoritarian, repressive regime currently in place in the Islamic Republic of Iran. And Mr. Speaker, why is it so important to talk about Iran? There are other regimes out there that are theocracies. There are other regimes out there, unfortunately, that violate fundamental human rights. There are other regimes out there that discriminate against women. There's other regimes out there that single out our ally Israel. But what is unique about the Iranian regime is they export their horrible record abroad. They encourage Yemen to also discriminate against the Baha'i community. They support terrorist groups like Hezbollah and Islamic Jihad and Hamas to wreak havoc on the Middle East, including what just recently occurred in Gaza. While Hamas is no doubt responsible for the violence that occurred and the unfortunate death of Palestinians in Gaza, Iran, behind the scenes, financed Hamas, gave them weapons to fire rockets and projectiles on peaceful civilians in Israel. And it was Iran behind the scenes that has helped the murderous Assad regime in Syria kill thousands of their own citizens with poison gas, has caused the dislocation of millions. So Iran has chosen to export its terror abroad. And Iran has chosen to single out one country, the most democratic country in the Middle East, one that respects the rights of people of all religions in the country, one that has an independent judiciary and a judiciary that is prized around the world, the nation of Israel, for condemnation. Now, Mr. Speaker, we've all been talking about world leaders who like to tweet. And one of those world leaders who like to tweet is the Ayatollah of Iran, the supreme religious leader, the Ayatollah Ali Husseini Khamenei. And while his remarks are odious, I think it's important to put in the record of this parliament what this gentleman has put on his Twitter account only this year. Israel is a hideous entity in the Middle East, which will undoubtedly be annihilated. Our stance against Israel is the same stance we have always taken. Israel is a malignant, cancerous tumor in the West Asian region that has to be removed and eradicated. It is possible and it will happen. That was on June 3rd. Woe to the heads of those dependent and traitorous countries who refrain from the great duty of fighting against Israel and defending Palestine only to win the U.S.'s attention and a few more days of power on June 2nd, 2018. Friendship with unbelievers brings misery to Muslims, like the friendship some Muslim states have with the Zionist regime, exchanging kind words and establishing economic or political relations, April 26, 2018. He went out of his way to say God's curse be upon the arrogant powers, their agents, as well as the, victorious, the vicious Zionist regime and the U.S. for destroying Muslims, January 30th, 2018. He's also called Israel barbaric, infanticidal, sinister, unclean, rabid dog of the region. Mr. Speaker, I can only say that this man's tweets bring shame upon his country, and it is unfortunate that we in this world today have to deal with a world leader who is so intent on destroying one small country in the region, the homeland of the Jewish people. But we shouldn't be surprised, because after all, this gentleman is also a Holocaust denier. 
Yes, Mr. Speaker, the six million Jews and the many other millions of gay people, Jehovah's Witnesses and others who perished in the Nazi Holocaust, this gentleman is not sure it really happened. That's why in 2016, for the second time, Iran held a Holocaust cartoon competition. We're invited anti-Semites and Holocaust deniers from across the world to come exhibit their wares in Tehran with a grand prize. And in 2016, the Ayatollah Khomeini, on Holocaust Remembrance Day, Yom HaShoah, the day that is sacred to the tens of thousands of Holocaust survivors living in Canada today who found refuge on our shores from the vicious, murderous entity that they had escaped in Europe. This gentleman on Holocaust Remembrance Day in 2016 published a video in which he said, no one in European countries dares to speak about the Holocaust while it is not clear whether the, ca the, ca the case of this matter, whether the core of this matter is a reality or not. <coughs> Even as if it is a reality, it is not clear how it happened. And this video featured images of Holocaust deniers Roger Garodi, David Irving, David Irving, and Robert Forreston. That, Mr. Speaker, is shocking. A regime that today still denies the Holocaust is one that is able to then impute to the, those who survived the Holocaust and came to Israel, the idea that they should then be obliterated from the face of the earth. I am proud to stand as part of a government that supports Israel, mm -hmm. that is a government that will defend Israel and recognizes that Israel not only has a right to exist, but has a right to defend itself against rockets that stream across its borders. In my view, Mr. Speaker, when Israel faced the situation in Gaza, I cannot imagine any country in the world that would have acted in any different a way had terrorists encouraged and incited people to stream against its borders, firing projectiles, and announcing to them that the border had been breached, go forward, go forward, and putting women and children and infants in front of the line. That is a disgrace. So, Mr. Speaker, when it comes to Iran, I also want to talk about my predecessor as a member of parliament from Mount Royal, the Honorable Erwin Kotler. Erwin Kotler was somebody with a principled foreign policy and somebody who believed in nonpartisanship and somebody who reached across the aisle and created an, Israel, an, an Iran Accountability Week that the Subcommittee on Foreign Affairs still runs that includes members of all party. And I have been honored to sit in on a couple of those committee hearings where we've heard from victors of the Iran victims of the Iranian regime, when we've heard from the Baha'i community here in Canada about the horrendous treatment of Baha'is in Iran, when we've heard that Iran executes more people per capita than any other country, including minors. And all parties in this House have joined together to hold Iran to account, and Canada has led on that issue by bringing forward and sponsoring resolutions at the United Nations to condemn the human rights violations of the Iranian regime. So I am very pleased to have the chance to stand here in the House today and support a resolution which condemns Iran, and I think we should all condemn Iran for its human rights violations at home, for its importation of human rights violations abroad, for its support of terrorist organizations throughout the Middle East, for its support of the butcherous Assad regime in Syria, for its denial of the Holocaust, for its threats of genocide against the Jewish people, for its attempts to eradicate Israel from the face of the earth, from its desire to become a nuclear power and proliferate nuclear arms across the Middle East. That deserves to be denounced, and I am pleased to have had the opportunity to do so today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Question.